Viewers, fellow anglers, and friends, I am Will Mack. This is Will Power Fishing. Now, I would love to be out on the water, but right now in Pennsylvania, it's about 15 degrees outside. And the only thing less active than the fish in 15 degrees is me. <laughs> Unless I'm in a deer stand, but, but we're talking about fishing here today. This is another gear video. I'm gonna be talking about my, my kayak crate, how I set it up, what lures I choose to go in there and why. The bottom line is I like to be prepared for, for any situation. And so I pack my gear and my lures accordingly. And today we're talking about my kayak crate. So I wanna give you guys an idea what my crate looks like. I'll show you what's in it and then how I repack it to make sure I'm as efficient as, efficient as possible out on the water. Uh, so here's my crate. Um, it would actually be a really good video showing you exactly how I built it. Um, so hopefully if I have to build another one in the future, then I will post that video as well. But I do have six rod holders, three on either side, specifically uh, designed for bait casting reels. And then these three are specifically designed for my spinning reels. Now, I do have a lid on my kayak crate. This does serve as uh, uh, something to keep everything in there, but also keeping things on top. Um, I can put a strap here or a bungee cord that will hold my hat, gloves, jackets, minnows, worms. It's really handy as a surface for your kayak. Um, it's being held on with zip ties in the back. It's, it's really very simple. Zip ties are my hinge and I have a half of a bungee cord here so that I can lock it, which uh, my crate does go on my kayak when I am driving to the lake. So it does help to not have this blown open and then potentially losing the lid or anything I may have inside as well. Like I said, I am going to go into detail as far as what I keep in each tray and in each small box that I have in here. But just to give you an idea, uh, I have everything pretty clearly labeled. This is my panfish stuff, so crappies and bluegills, perch, this is terminal tackle, this is mainly for bass, jig box mainly for bass, and my bladed jigs, which also obviously mainly for bass. Now, I also have a lot of other stuff that doesn't necessarily fit inside one of these tackle trays, and I've found some pretty ingenious ways to store those as well. Um, I have small swim baits in here, I have top water lures, inside of this utility box. I have a Ziploc quart plastic bag, one quart plastic bag holding a bunch of plastics. And then I also have repurposed some lunch meat packages or Tupperwares uh, to also hold plastics. As you can see, everything has its specific spot I try to stay as organized as I possibly can. There's nothing worse than hunting for a lure you know will work in a situation and you just can't find it, or a small bullet weight, uh, or anything else that you may be looking for. So, um, let's go through my crate, one tackle tray at a time, and I'll show you exactly what I keep in there and why. These are what make the bulk of what's in my kayak crate. These are Spro 3500 waterproof tackle trays. You can get them on Tackle Warehouse for eight bucks. So for as quality as these are, they are very affordable. This is my panfish tray. Open this boy up. The main things I use in here are 132nd ounce ball jig heads and 116th ounce ball jig heads. 
I have some small crankbaits that I use from time to time, right, for catching really active panfish. Right here is a rapala, I'm not even, I think it's a countdown, about uh, an inch and a half long. Amongst others, uh, others, I also have some small inline spinners. All right, so I'm gonna give you a real good idea here. Uh, I also have a little float compartment, but a lot of these are taken up with various types of plastics. Um, I, I catch a lot of fish on grub tail lures, an inch and a half or two inch grub tail lures. Um, once again, I, I do have some slightly heavier jigs if I run into perch or something else uh, like that that's biting. But this is going to be all of my smaller tackle that I use for catching perch, bluegill, crappie. This next box could be the most important one. It's my terminal tackle. Hooks, weights, stuff like that. Uh, here's what it looks like. <clears throat> is I've got my drop shot weights, both lead and tungsten. I have two compartments, one devoted to heavier ones, one to a little bit lighter ones. Weighted swim bait hooks, which anytime you run into a bunch of weeds, which I do up here in the Northeast, those come in handy. Also other wide gaps. I like using smaller Texas rigs, so I have uh, one and two aught hooks as well as three and four aught hooks. And then there's my bullet weights. I once again have tungsten and lead. Uh, these are my half ounce, three quarter ounce. Uh, I think I have some three eighths in there as well. These are my lighter, so I have one eighth uh, and quarter ounce bullet weights right here. Bobber stops, guys. Got to have bobber stops. If you're fishing Texas rigs or Carolina rigs or anything else, um, anything, anywhere you, way you want to peg a weight, got to have bobber stops. I got plenty of those. Drop shot hooks. Right, my small octopus hooks. Mosquito hooks. Ned rigs. I've got a bunch of those here. Uh, I've got a bigger Ned rig. I've got uh, bigger gumball jig heads. These are actually... Uh, VMC Moon Eye jig heads. I believe these are quarter ounce. I've got bigger swim bait heads. This is one of my favorites here. This is a Dobbins weedless. Looks like I've used that one a little bit. Other Ned rigs. Um, you know, that's one of the big things that, to fish with nowadays is, is Ned rigs. Uh, these are chartreuse, stand out a little bit. Also a little bit lighter than some of my other ones. And then I've got random random shaky head and worm weighted worm hooks tube hooks right here so anything that is weighted um and 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 or has a hook goes right here in this box right here as that is terminal tackle like i said could be the most important box that i that i have now if terminal tackle is the most important box that i have this might be the most fun box that I have. Right here is my, my swim jigs and bladed jigs, bladed jigs. So by bladed, I mean everything from spinner baits right here. This is, I absolutely love uh, Dobbins spinner baits. Okay, so that's a, a quarter inch, or excuse me, quarter ounce spinner bait right there. Um, I'm not sure what type of spinner bait that is, but more of the same. Um, that, that double willow leaf, I love throwing that in the, the spring and summertime. Here are my swim jigs. I do have a swim jig right there. When I say bladed, anything, so this is actually a blade bait, right? Those are real popular in the wintertime. Uh, I'm also a big fan in the spring and early summer of an underspin. So I, I do carry two or three underspins with me. Everybody loves chatterbaits. I think right now uh, with where bass fishing is, um, bladed jigs, so chatterbaits, um, motion. Motion makes a really good bladed jig that, I, that I'm really enjoying throwing lately. But these are right up there with Ned Rigs when you're talking about fish catchers. You can throw a chatterbait in any weather, any climate, and, uh, and you got a really good chance of hooking up with, with the, the bass you're after. Now you can see I got several different colors. I think most of these are Z-Man. I know this is a this is a Thunder Cricket 
right here, Strike King Thunder Cricket. I believe this is made by Strike King. I'm not 100% sure. But um, it, all colors of chatterbaits, you just got to color the entire, you got to cover the entire spectrum. Uh, there's a little bit of a crappie slash shad colored one right here. And then I've got my swim jigs. I love throwing swim jigs. I, I like chucking and winding, man. I, I love chucking and winding. And when you're around a lot of cover, logs, structure, uh, even um, really rocky areas, grassy areas, lots of plant, milfoil, whatever, swim jigs are just, just a must have. So like I said, this is just a fun box. I love throwing spinner baits. I love throwing chatter baits. I love throwing underspins, uh, lures with big flash. That is everything inside my, my bladed, my bladed, I call it my swim jigs slash bladed baits we're going from the funnest box that i have to the most basic box that i have this is a box that i will take with me where if i'm bank fishing if i'm in the kayak if i go in somebody else's boat it's got to be with me it's just jigs it's jigs it's regular peanut butter and jelly everybody's caught fish on them jigs i got my black and blues i've got my uh okeechobee's I've got green pumpkins, uh, peanut butter and jellies. I've got some with with uh, orange on them, uh, some with blue on them. Um, you know, jigs are just a, an absolute must have. Uh, they're the most versatile bait. You can chuck them into cover. I've got flipping jigs. I've got I've got football jigs. Um, I could, I love jigs. I do love, I do love tossing jigs there. They often produce the biggest fish and the most fish that I catch every year. Um, and then, um, so I, I carry, as you can see about maybe a dozen, maybe 15 of them. Most of them have trailers. I do believe I have some in here. No, I think all of them, all of them have trailers. I, I get bored, you know, as fishermen. They, listen, the only thing that comes close to actually fishing for a fisherman is getting ready to go fish. So <laughs> all my jigs have trailers on them because if I get bored, I'm going downstairs and I'm throwing some trailers on some jigs. Other than that, uh, I've got a tube jig ready to go. I've got a dark sleeper. Okay, that, that you could argue that I should keep that in my my swim jig box, but it's it's in my jig box. There's a a small Ned rig ready to go. Uh, so, like I said, this is my this is my peanut butter and jelly box right here. If if I'm fishing, if I've got a rod in my hand, I have my jig box with me so that is my four spro tackle trays as you can see i have them well labeled so you know when you're in your kayak and you turn all the way around you can clearly see what uh what is in each box this is pretty important this is a plano double-sided stowaway um 3450 utility box boy that that is a mouthful for a tiny little box but in here i keep all of my top waters i keep my poppers i keep my frogs i keep my popping frogs i keep spooks um, and what's really cool is it is double-sided so on the other side i have more poppers and whopper ploppers or prop baits, which uh, work, come in handy. Um, so this is an absolute must have. It is an efficient way to store tackle and you can throw a lot of top waters in there. Sometimes spooks work, sometimes poppers work, sometimes whopper ploppers work. It just helps to cover all situations. Next thing is plastic storage. Now these are just repurposed lunch meat Tupperwares. Uh, one, I have my creatures and craws, and in one, I have drop shots and worms. Now, we all have the plastics that we gravitate to. Um, rage craws, 
Rage Menace, uh, the Guggen Bandito Bug. Whatever you like, you, odds are is you have four, five, a dozen packages of it. But on a kayak where space is at a premium, you just you just can't bring all of that. And if you do, you might hamper your ability to access other tackle. So I'm just gonna show you briefly what I carry in mind. I'm a big fan of the Strike King Rage line. So I stick to three main plastics is the Structure Bug, the Rage Craw, and the Rage Menace. Now, I also use a lot of double tail grubs, which uh, are, in my opinion, an absolutely awesome jig trailer as well. The point is, I have a few of each, and I try to keep um, a few different colors. I, I love my Candy Craw with a little bit of purple in it. I love Okeechobee, and I love black and blue. So what I try to do is just keep a few of everything in there. Odds are, if you have a trailer on, you're not gonna go through five trailers. You might go through one or two, including the one that you already have tied on your jig. So you just don't need that many. In the other one, I've got some drop shot baits. So drop shot worms. This is the missile bait Ned Bomb. I've got some leech imitators, some, some, some Ned Rig, worms. Uh, I've got some some curly tail grubs that believe it or not these go awesome. I caught my biggest smallie of the year maybe two years ago on a Ned Rig uh, grub tail. So those go really good. You can throw anything on a, on a Ned Rig. I've got dragon drops. This is the Guggen Squad dragon drops. So once again I try to carry an assortment of plastics and an assortment of colors. One more container of plastics. I carry them in a highly used one quart Ziploc. And if you don't learn any other tip, and if you haven't found this out on your own, you'll find this very interesting. Z-Man makes awesome plastics. They last, you, you can catch fish after fish. The thing is, do not store them with any other plastic. My brother-in-law learned the hard way. He, he threw them all in a big Ziploc. We were on our way to, to New York to the Adirondacks to go bass fishing. We got up there, he opens up his Ziploc and they were all melted together. He probably had 40 or $50 worth of plastics that had all been melted together. So they will chemically react with other baits. You have to store your Z-Man plastics separately. I've got uh, a bag of Senkos and other Gary Yamamoto baits, some D-Bombs, which is their brand of Fluke. Speaking of Fluke, as I've got several different types of Fluke as well, along with some Robo Worms. So I do carry some packs with me, um, but I keep them all condensed in a one quart Ziploc. What about swim baits? I got them. Once again, I found a way to repurpose my packaging. I shop at Cabela's, I, I shop at Bass Pro Shop. This is their tournament series Speed Shad package. I'm talking about the package right now. These are awesome for storing swim baits. Once again, I, I don't bring five of the same six of the same swim bait. I want to have a variety while I'm out there on the water so that I can adapt to the conditions presented with me. In one of these, I have already tied up or, or already rigged up swim baits. I'll pull one out. This is one that is on a Moon Eye. This is a, a Kitech Easy Shiner that I, I love fishing with. It's already rigged up on a VMC Moon Eye jig. I have another one, same thing, Kitech Easy Shiner. This one is rigged up on a, a tungsten, eighth ounce ball jig. Uh, and then I have another one 
the this jig uh, this jig head escapes me right now. But once again, they sell it at Cabela's. I'll leave it in the comments below. But uh, it's a phenomenal jig head. Once again, rigged with a Kitec Easy Shiner. Now, the other two packages that I keep with me, I don't keep pre-rigged baits. These are Swing Impact Kitec Swing Impact Shads as well as. Uh, speed shads different colors as you can see I got the chartreuse in blue I've got the smallmouth magic I've got white in here um, and then the other ones I have more easy shiners I think this is all easy shiners in here but I have the sexy shad color this is the bluegill flash it's a uh, blue and and white and then I have the probably my favorite I catch more fish on the gold flash minnow easy shiner I, I use this as a chatterbait trailer spinnerbait trailer plain jig heads uh, but this is my favorite color the gold flash minnow all right the last thing that i keep in my kayak crate and the only thing that i haven't spoken of at all this is a flambo z rust max waterproof tough tainer why do these why do these tackle trays have the longest flipping names this is the wp 3001 zm it sounds like a flipping terminator and all it does is carry my line i use spinning rods a lot spinning rods i use braid on i just find it works better for me but that also means i need to tie on leaders this box actually goes in the very bottom of my crate because uh, i don't need it a ton but it is big enough <clears throat> I'll hold it like this it is big enough that it can hold my six pound test uh, obviously that i use on my light rod eight pound test and 10 pound test red label fluorocarbon. This is strictly leader line. So whether I'm throwing a finesse swim bait, a drop shot or pan fishing, I, I always have my leader line with me just in case I break off, cast into a tree, get snagged and lose my line. It's always right here. All right, this right here spread out on the table my Spro Tackle trays, my plastics, my topwaters, and my line all fits inside my tackle tray. And I'll show you how I stick it all in there right now. First thing that goes in, this is, goes on the bottom, this is my line. Next thing I'm gonna put in is my four tackle trays. Doesn't really matter which order, you know, I use these kind of all the same. This is clumsy doing this with one hand. Three, and then four of them. All right, next is the space for my plastics and my, my top water lures. So first thing I usually put in, once again, this is, a little, this is gonna be a little awkward. I'm, I'm having to hold the camera, hold my boxes up and put this in at the same time. We'll figure out how to do this. We find solutions. So this is my plastics. I stick them in vertically, just like that. Next thing that goes in is my swim baits, my soft plastic swim baits. That's going right there. What goes in behind my swim baits is just enough room right here for my top water utility box. That fits just like that. Let's just turn that around. It's in just like that. And then the only thing that I have left is my, uh, my one quart zip lock, which slides really nicely. I slide the zipper end uh, behind my Tupperwares there. And that way the plastics kind of fit in this little uh, space there. And this all fits very efficiently inside my kayak crate. And, uh, and it's ready to go. But wait, where's your crankbaits? <laughs> I got that. So um, you are limited as far as it goes in a kayak. I do carry my jerkbaits, square bills, crankbaits, 
inside the Spro 3700 series tackle tray. This one will run 11 bucks, so still highly affordable, even though it's quite a bit bigger than the 3500s. Once again, I do carry uh, a lot of variety with my, with my crankbaits and jerkbaits. I love X wraps. That's the X wrap is primarily what I throw as far as jerk baits. Although I do have some Smithwicks and some Husky jerks in here, I have some uh, some jointed baits. I have a couple deep divers. This is a pretty big one there that'll get down to about 15. I've got others that'll get down to about eight. I think that's a shad wrap. I have some wake baits. I have some square bills. This is one that I just got that I'm I'm really excited to, to toss him around. That is that is a, a hell of a paint job right there on that. So this this crankbait right here, uh, let me give them a shout out real quick because I, I am excited to throw that. This is a Robusto Custom Lures uh, square bill crankbait. That thing is that thing is beautiful. I, I'm excited to toss that. But I do have some wake baits and I even have some some rattle traps, some some lipless crankbaits in there. So uh, yes, I am prepared as far as hard baits go. That being said, I keep those behind my seat. If you are lucky enough to have a little bit of space under your seat in your kayak, that's a really good space for them. But you know, as long as all your other tackle is neatly stored inside your kayak, if you need to carry your hard baits on the outside, you can usually find a little bit of room. I am ready for any situation. And the idea is to be number one, ready to take advantage of whatever situation mother nature throws at you. And number two, be efficient about it. You will lose time on the water, untangling baits, um, pulling plastics apart, trying to find the lure that you want to throw you will you will lose time that you could spend casting uh, on the water if you are not organizing and every cast that you lose out on the water because you're fumbling with your tackle is a lost or missed opportunity to catch the next fish thanks for watching the video guys i hope you found one or two tips that is going to make you a more efficient angler out on the water and as always, smash like, and until next time, tie on a lure, chuck and wine, baby. Peace.